Berserk has changed everything for me. Since I'm 100% a filthy casual and have been playing Elden Ring and reading and watching everything I can about it, there are obviously tons of outlets that are talking about the connection to Berserk, whether you see the Dragon Slayer sword in Elden Ring or Guts's armor, or just Miyazaki was inspired to make Dark Souls because of Berserk and look at all the, these enemies and... Yeah, there's a lot. I started researching what's the best way to start watching Berserk because there's a bunch of different animated series. And they're actually pretty accessible with the Golden Age film trilogy available on Netflix and with Crunchyroll having both the 2016 and 2017 adaptations. And I already knew basically by osmosis that people preferred the 1997 series to everything. But while looking up different forums and threads and YouTube videos and where to start, I was consistently beaten over the head with just read the manga. And also Berserk is the greatest manga of all time. So I grabbed my Kindle and I started reading the digital version. Obvious spoilers for the Black Swordsman arc and the Golden Age arcs here. Now, the Black Swordsman arc, especially for a new reader or viewer, not gonna lie, it's a lot to take in. I mean, right from the beginning, Guts is boning an apostle and is being a complete edgelord. I think that Kentaro Miura was still figuring out Guts at this point. It's kind of obvious. Guts is very different in these early chapters of the Black Swordsman arc. Now, I've still only read through the Golden Age arc, but Guts' actions during the Black Swordsman arc, at least in the first couple chapters, are questionable to me, especially since it just seems out of character for Guts. I don't think, personally, Guts would have acted in these two ways. Let's go over them. First off, banging the Apostle. Guts would just straight up kill the Apostle. There's no way for him to have to trick it. He doesn't need to hide his intentions. He would just murder it. I'm also not sure that Guts would have relations with anyone other than Casca, especially since everything he's gone through. Let's be honest, Guts has been through an insane amount of sexual trauma, from Gambino selling Guts to Donovan when he was a child, to what he was forced to watch with Femto and Casca. In my opinion, Guts would never act this way towards sex. He would never use it this way just to kill a monster. Another example I found, Guts would never get caught on purpose, or get caught without a fight, as he does here. He would easily wreck all of these soldiers without even breaking a sweat. There's no reason for him to give in to them and be put in prison. As I mentioned, I think Guts is still being fleshed out here by Mura, but for a new reader, this is a little difficult to grasp. Because throughout Volume 1, you basically learn that Guts is a complete and utter asshole. There's no way around that. He's unlikable, and he's basically an asshole to everyone he comes across. Puck, Adolf, Colette, and Vargas. Also, Guts is looked at as almost unkillable and basically the strongest guy around. He carries the Dragon Slayer sword that no one else could wield. He has equipment that no one even knows about, like his mechanical hand that can shoot a repeating crossbow or hand cannon. To me, it's pretty clear that Guts is set up to be badass main character, which is fine. Maybe more so asshole main character, because it could be argued that Guts doesn't care about anyone but himself claiming multiple times that if you're weak, you should just die. But the beauty of the Black Swordsman arc isn't revealed, at least in my experience, until revisiting it after you've read the Golden Age arc. As you realize, there is so much more depth to Guts than in those initial chapters. Guts is trying his best to act this way because of all the truly horrifying things he's gone through throughout his life. Basically, his whole life has been terrible and a tragedy, especially the end of the Golden Age arc when we see how and why he lost his eye and hand. Guts is acting this way in the Black Swordsman arc because he doesn't want to get close to anyone. He won't allow himself to because of the brand's curse. He's constantly fighting apostles, demons, monsters, all while still attempting to deal with the events of the Eclipse and all the inner demons that left him with. But taking a closer look at the panels of the Black Swordsman arc, you can find some chinks in this armor of his, Guts's facade. Take a look at the way he reacts to Colette's repossessed or revived body. He allows her to stab him, almost as if he's shocked. But look at the way he reacts, specifically after he, of course, chops her in half. He pukes his guts out, no pun intended. Or maybe. Skipping to the end of the arc, a more memorable moment, and quite possibly the most memorable moment in the whole manga, this panel. Haters may claim, oh, Edgelord is really just a sad emo boy, Wah. But that is wrong, so very, very wrong. Once again, this takes on a whole nother level, especially when you know the events of the entirety of the Golden Age arc. But what a way to let us know that Guts actually has a soul. 
Guts realizes what his actions towards Teresa and basically his whole interaction with the Count has done. Upon my first read, this to me shows that Guts actually has a heart and is essentially heartbroken. This girl Teresa is now set up for an awful life full of pain and nightmares. Guts treated her poorly is quite the understatement, but maybe deep down Guts telling her to kill herself is a way he's being passionate towards her as it would save her from a life of trauma and nightmares. Albeit it's a terrible thing to say to anyone, but just look at the way Guts has been living his life ever since the brand. Maybe Guts knew at that time that his actions were both right and wrong. Either way, this is now a tragic tale for Teresa and just another terrible aspect of Guts' own life. Especially once you know the full story of the Golden Age arc. Guts never had a childhood. He basically grew up on the battlefield with an abusive father figure who Guts winds up killing because he finds out it was his father Gambino who sold him for a night to Donovan, who rapes him. While I felt that Guts was justified in his actions, it never leaves his head and haunts him. As we see after he sleeps with Casca that he breaks down and tells her that he killed his father. Guts has lost everything. Guts finally managed to work through his troubled upbringing to have friends, only to have them all literally ripped from him at the end of the Golden Age arc during the Eclipse when the entire Band of the Hawk is wiped out. That's why this panel of tears hits so much harder after you've read the Golden Age arc and come back to it. Which I completely think that everyone reading Berserk for the first time should do, well, no, need to do after reading through the Golden Age arc, Return to the Black Swordsman arc. It baffles me that I've read a couple of recommendations that people should just skip the Black Swordsman arc and just start with the Golden Age arc. I even saw some recommendations that people don't like Berserk after the Golden Age arc ends and that's where you should stop. And at first I thought that was insane. But thinking about it, I guess it makes a little bit of sense. It reminds me very specifically of season one of Game of Thrones and my dad. Now, Game of Thrones first episode, Winter is Coming, starts off, yes, with White Walkers, but we basically don't see any type of fantasy for the rest of the season until the very end, when Daenerys is revived with three dragons. The rest of the season one plays out like a medieval political drama with some fighting here and there, right? And of course, my dad doesn't like fantasy, so after he saw that dragons thing, he made sure to comment to me that dragons are stupid and he's done watching the show. <laughs> now, a lot of the reasons why I saw that people drop after the Golden Age arc is because it introduces, Berserk introduces way too much fantasy than they were used to in that arc. Many chapters, hell, volumes in general, play out like those early episodes of Game of Thrones. Barely any fantasy. We see medieval siege warfare, unique sets of armor, political drama, plots against royalty, and of course a scheme for Griffith's rise to power. Hell, we even get an assassination attempt or a boar hunting sequence, which both, right? But for a while there, we don't get any fantasy until volume 5 with Nosferatu Zod. Then, if I'm not mistaken, no basically fantasy at all until volume 9 with the appearance of the Skull Knight. And this is one of the big reasons why I think it's insane that people skip the Black Swordsman arc, as it really sets you up to have expectations of what this series is, dark fantasy. The Golden Age arc is a flashback, albeit a very long one, but if you're not into dark fantasy, I don't think Berserk is going to be for you at all, because the Golden Age still has it there. Especially the Eclipse, that, that's going to be a big shock if you aren't looking for fantasy at all. And for me, Personally, just reading the Golden Age arc would be completely unsatisfying, and it's only a small part of the entire story. Granted, a most likely unfinished story, but... So, after I read those two arcs, I went to check out some of the anime adaptations, mostly the film trilogy of the Golden Age arc, and I believe that that film trilogy really isn't for anyone else other than readers of the manga. It's a decent adaptation, but it's really just a supplement because it leaves so much of it out. The movies overall were fine. The animation was a mix between really good looking action and odd low frame rate scenes of people just standing around talking. It isn't fluid and it actually reminded me some of the Animatrix shorts, which I was right on the money with because Studio 4C, or 4 Celsius, whatever, actually animated three of those shorts, two of which were actually my favorites, the two from Shinataro Watanabe, Detective Story, and Kid's Story. And the third, Beyond, was okay as well. But as I've learned from the many adaptations of Berserk in anime, they just leave too much of the story out. Specifically for the film trilogy, 
the Queen of Midland's plot, the way the king is obsessed and reacts to his daughter Princess Charlotte, also completely leaving Wilde out, who for some reason people seem to hate on. I personally thought that Wilde was a perfect informant to the reader that, hey, shit is about to go down and things are about to change. A point of no return of sorts. Get ready for fantasy, tragedy, and the Black Swordsman, basically. I know the 2016 and 17 adaptations are pretty universally hated because I believe poor animation quality, but I want to finish reading the manga before I check those out at all because I know they take place in later arcs of the manga. And obviously I don't want to be spoiled, so I'll wait to watch those. And I know that the 1997 Berserk is mostly loved. I checked out the first episode, which is actually the only episode that deals with the Black Swordsman arc. So once again, not a great adaptation of the manga because it leaves so much of the Black Swordsman arc out. And I know the series in general leaves out a lot of the manga. It leaves out Wild once again, leads out Puck and the Skull Knight. I plan on watching and covering on this channel the 1997 anime, but once again, not until I finish the manga. And because of all those anime facts that I just dished out, I completely understand now why the recommendation is to just read Berserk. Just know that you need to commit. The Black Swordsman arc, without the context of the Golden Age arc, is completely a different animal. Follow that up with the Golden Age arc itself, which goes on for many volumes setting up Guts' tragic backstory. I personally didn't feel hooked until somewhere around volume 6 or 7 of the single volume issues, and that very quickly was followed up with what I feel like is probably the best volume of the Golden Age arc in volume 9. By the time I hit volume 10, I just couldn't put it down. I finished the rest of the Golden Age arc, which runs through into volume 14 in a single sitting. I was previously reading a chapter, two, maybe three before bed each night, but I sat down for a little while to read some Berserk on a Sunday and wound up reading uh, volumes 10 through 14 in a single sitting in like a couple hours. It was, it was that good. And I followed that immediately by going right back to the Black Swordsman arc and reading that. Obviously, this is a video just on the Black Swordsman arc and Golden Age arcs, so I have a bit more reading to do, but... So far, all I can say is, wow. Berserk has made me a fan and believer in manga. There is so much to Guts, Casca, and Griffith that it's almost too much to take in. I understand now why Guts freaks out early on when people just touch him. Why he acts the way he does in the Black Swordsman arc, basically putting on a front to others. Because he has to protect himself, all the time. His way of life in reference to the brand, and how he just needs to keep people away, otherwise they'll most likely die. And that takes a toll on Guts. If anyone gets close to him, they'll have to deal with literal Guts' demons. And it's probably not going to work out for them because no one seems to be as strong as Guts is. What a tragic tale. You know, all I ever really knew about Guts, or Berserk in general, was the cover art of that Dreamcast game, Sword of the Berserk Guts' Rage. Back then, to me, he just looked like a Cloud or Zack ripoff. Little did I know that Cloud or Zack would have been inspired by Guts and not the other way around. And now that I think about it, Sephiroth is probably based off Griffith, right? So if you're a Berserk veteran who watched this video, I'd love to see what you think about my breakdown of the first two arcs of Berserk. 